A very good evening and a warm welcome to the Tuesday edition of Primetime News, broadcasting from our Eras Park studios here in Vintuk. It's a pleasure having you. I'm Salima Shumwefeleni Masipa. Leading our news bulletin tonight, the Southern African Development Community, SADC, held an extraordinary meeting of the Council of Ministers on Monday to discuss the cholera outbreak being experienced in several member states. Andreas Thomas was in attendance for the deliberations and filed our lead report. During a virtual meeting, Ted Antonio, chairperson of the Sadek Council of Ministries, emphasized the need for collective and coordinated action to prevent and control the cholera outbreak in the region. Cholera has been reported in several Sadek countries, including the Democratic Republic of Congo, Malawi, Zambia, Mozambique, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe since October 2023. SADC Executive Secretary Elias Mahosi highlighted that the World Health Organization classified the global resurgence of cholera as a grade 3 emergency last year. This classification signifies the highest internal level of a health emergency necessitating a comprehensive response at national, regional and global levels. Mahosi expressed deep concern about the current trend with five SADC member states experiencing ongoing cholera outbreaks contributing to 73% of cholera cases on the African continent. He stressed the urgency for the region to address the situation collectively. Daniela Isaacs reporting for Primetime News. Staying atop health matters, Health and Social Services Minister Dr. Kalumbi Shangula says the Namibian government is committed to ensuring that all treatment success rates for leprosy remain high to prevent reinfection and community transmission. Once again, Andreas Thomas brings us this report. During a speech commemorating World Leprosy Day at Katima Mulilu on Monday, Health Minister Shangula announced the development of tools within his ministry to ensure periodic reassessment of leprosy survivors. He emphasized the commitment of providing treatment for those diagnosed with the disease. The national guideline presented by Shangula is aligned with the latest World Health Organization standards, reflecting Namibia's dedication to addressing leprosy as a public health priority. In the previous year, 22 leprosy cases were recorded until September, with 7 reported in the Sambesi region, 11 in the Kavango region, 3 in the Oshana region, and 1 in the Omusati region. Dr. Douglas Muswe, the senior medical officer at Katima Mulilu State Hospital, underscored the urgency of reassessing existing programs due to the underreporting of leprosy cases. He expressed concern that the recorded numbers might underestimate the actual prevalence with communities. Namibia classifies leprosy as an endemic, particularly in the Sambesi and Kavango regions. Dr. Muswe advocated for the implementation of community-based programs to effectively address leprosy, recognizing the importance of reaching affected individuals beyond formal health care reporting channels. Daniela Isaacs reporting for Primetime News. Turning our attention to neighboring South Africa, where the ruling ANC party suspended the country's former president, Jacob Zuma, from the party on Monday and vowed to launch a legal challenge against a rival group campaigning in his name. Here's more on the announcement by the party's secretary general, Fikile Mbalula. The NEC concluded that exceptional circumstances exist to justify and warrant an immediate decision to suspend former ANC President Jacob Zuma in line with Rule 25.60. The NEC took note of the announcement by former ANC President Jacob Zuma on 16 December 2023. He announced that he will be campaigning for another political party and further launched a series of vitriolic attacks against the ANC and its leadership. The formation of MK Party is not an accident. 
it is a deliberate attempt to use the proud history of armed struggle against the apartheid regime to lend credibility to what is a blatantly counter-revolutionary agenda. Zuma and others whose conduct is in conflict with our values and principles will find themselves outside the African National Congress. The JZ Party Project aims to cast doubt on our entire constitutional democracy. In this regard, in assuming this reactionary public posture, former President Zuma is actively asserting himself as the figurehead of counter-revolution in South Africa. On to developments in the Middle East. Undercover Israeli troops raided a West Bank hospital and shot dead three Palestinians earlier today, the Palestinian Health Ministry said, while the army said the three belonged to a Hamas terrorist cell. AFP brings us more details. An AFP photographer saw a bullet hole on a pillow covered in blood following the raid at IB and Sina Hospital in the northern city of Jenin, where Palestinians gathered around the bodies of those killed. The Israeli military said forces entered the hospital, a major health facility seven Jenin city, and its adjacent refugee camp to target a Hamas terrorist cell. Announcing the killing by Israeli forces of three people inside the hospital, the Palestinian Health Ministry stressed healthcare facilities are granted special protection under international law. A ministry statement said the Minister of Health calls urgently on the United Nations General Assembly, international institutions and human rights organizations to end the daily string of crimes committed by the occupation of Israel against people and health centers. The Palestinian Foreign Ministry said the heinous hospital killings were a crime against humanity in a statement on X, formerly Twitter. Closed circuit television footage tweeted by the Palestinian Ministry and said to be from the hospital shows armed men and women disguised in medical uniforms or civilian clothes moving through its corridors. Reporting for Primetime News, I'm Michael Madimba. Your top roundup is up next with the business segment thereafter. Welcome to Primetime Biz, your premier source for all updates business and economics related. Tonight's segment focuses on the theme of corruption. The Anti-Corruption Commission is hosting an anti-corruption framework workshop in Vintic this week in partnership with the Technical Assistance and Information Exchange Instrument of the European Commission. More from this insert. The three-day workshop started on Monday. Its objectives align with the execution of the National Anti-Corruption Strategy and Action Plan of 2021 to 2025, with the focus on Act 2.1.3, which focuses on establishing a comprehensive framework at national level to conduct corruption risk management within public entities. The workshop also aims to provide expert and practical support to Namibia in developing the national framework for conducting corruption risk management bodies. It followed an expert mission carried out in November 2023. Reporting for Prime Time Biz, I'm Michael Madimba. On to neighboring South Africa, where global corruption watchdog Transparency International revealed earlier today that South Africa's Corruption Perception Index has dropped to its lowest in 12 years and was below the global average. AFP brings us more details. Transparency International said since Corruption Watch started tracking its progress on the index 12 years ago, South Africa has never scored as low as 41 until now. 
The NGO noted with the general election due this year, the Southern African nation's image has been stained by a lackluster economic record and allegation of corruption and cronyism. Support for its ruling party, the African National Congress, which has been in power since the start of the democratic rule in 1994, has dipped below 50% as the campaign hits up. The Corruption Watch statement said it is one of 23 countries that reached their lowest ever scores this year, stumbling into the category of flawed democracies. According to the report, 80% of the world's population lives in countries where the score is below the global average of 43. The Corruption Perception Index scores 180 countries and territories around the globe on perceived levels of public sector corruption according to experts and business people. Up next is tomorrow's countrywide weather forecast, followed by a roundup of the latest economic news.
Welcome to Sport Planet, the segment unpacking all things sporting related. The segment commences locally. The Namibia Volleyball Federation has secured a sponsorship deal with mobile telecommunications giant MTC to the tune of 3 million Namibian dollars for the next three years. The announcement was made at a press conference this afternoon in the capital. Let's listen in. It is with immense gratitude and excitement that I stand before you as president of Namibia Volleyball Federation to express our heartfelt appreciation for the generous sponsorship of an amount that will be announced this afternoon from the 081 brand, that is the MTC brand, towards the implementation of what will be known as the MTC Volleyball National League, that is MTC VNL. Ladies and gentlemen, it should be noted that the sponsorship is not just a financial contribution. It is a powerful endorsement for our shared vision and growth and the development of volleyball in Namibia. We are not doing this for the money, but we are doing this for the passion of the game. And that is exactly what MTC is about. It's about making that connection between your passion and what you want to achieve. And um, uh, so basically it was that game or those two games that I watched that sold this sponsorship to a big brand like MTC. Um, so many times we get request letters from people who just want to partner with us, but they also want to do so for the wrong regions. Uh, this reason here resonated solely with the passion that we saw on that very day. Today we are going to make um, not just a one-year commitment, not a two-year commitment, but a three-year commitment uh, on your new MTC Premiership that you are going to start. We, you have explained to us that you have, I think, seven or eight or nine regional uh, leagues that are going on in the regions, and that you now want to elevate this to start a Premiership, uh, which is going to be called the MTC Premiership. We are very excited to start this journey with you and to commit an amount or an operational amount of one million Namibian dollars per annum uh, at a cost of three million Namibian dollars over the next three years. Arsenal boss Mikel Arteta slammed reports he was ready to quit Arsenal to become Barcelona manager as fake news. Reports in Spain earlier in the week claimed Arteta had told colleagues he was going to leave the Emirates Stadium to return to Barcelona at the end of the season. Current Barca boss Xavi announced on Saturday he would step down in the summer after a string of disappointing results leading to Arteta being installed as one of the favourites to replace him. Having come through the fabled academy at Barcelona, Arteta has a long-standing connection to the Camp Nou. But the 41-year-old on Monday insisted he is keen to stay put as he aims to lead Arsenal to their first Premier League title since 2004. Stay tuned for your sports roundup. This is where we conclude this evening's broadcast. Do make a date with us again tomorrow and a parting reminder that to stay abreast with the developments within and beyond our borders, do follow the on-screen prompts to be subscribed to our channel. Otherwise, from myself, Silima Shumwefeleni Masipa, and my production crew behind the scenes, it's good night.